Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. A little bit of background before we discuss the specific model, the Seiko Ananta Collection bowed back in 2009 and in many respects it marked the beginning of Seiko timepieces that were poised in the market to attract dollars previously marked by Breitling, Omega, and even Grand Seiko, as this is a true luxury timepiece with a Seiko badge. This is the Spring Drive GMT. The Ananta Spring Drive GMT is a big watch. 46 millimeters in stainless steel. The timepiece sits large on my wrist, but there is an ergonomic equation that starts with the stumpiness of the lugs and ends with the curvature of the case. So don't be frustrated by the size. This is a 46 that I believe would wear well on a wrist as small as 14 and a half centimeters circumference. Its lug-to-lug -lug dimension is 50.7 millimeters, and again, the curvature of the watch and the almost cushion-like profile of the case, at least on its underside, means that this one sits fairly lightly and easily. It's 14.5 millimeters thick, so it's neither thick nor thin. I, I think thick watches have to be over 15 millimeters thick. This should slide underneath just about any jacket, and as you might have guessed, the spacing between the lugs is immense and a very contemporary 24 millimeters. The factory strap lives up to the luxury pretensions of the model itself. It is a medium rectangular scale alligator leather and a semi-gloss finish. It's generously bolstered where it approaches the lugs, so you can see how it swells to match the swell of the lugs themselves. There is a folded edge, a monotone stitch, there's calfskin on the underside, and you can see this is a new Seiko factory strap. The watch was not about pinching pennies, as it includes a full stainless steel trigger actuated deployant, so not just a deployant, but trigger lock, very secure, and more assurance that you won't drop your watch while donning or removing it bed side. The case construction is fascinating, first because so much of it's hand finished. You can see outboard the Zeratsu polish, the tin plate manual polishing to which the finest Seiko, Grand Seiko, and Crador timepieces are subjected. Now this is something you're used to seeing on Crador and Grand Seiko, but back in 2009 it was anything but the rule to find Zeratsu black mirror polish on a Seiko timepiece. And this was really the beginning of the mainstreaming of Zeratsu polish on luxury price point Seiko watches. You also appreciate that there is a unusual construction method here as the case back is effectively a plinth on which the canister for the case and the dial is mounted. You can see that there's this bottom that acts as a cradle, almost pincers, holding the case itself like a gem set inside a ring. And then there is that canister for the case, the bezel, and the dial that sits inside this outer clasp or cradle. That's one of the reasons the watch is so comfortable and spreads its mask so well on the wrist. The crown is one of the most impressive I've encountered. It's an inverse cone, so it's broader at its outer face. It is both polished and satin finished, and when withdrawn, it's about as solid and resolute in its stance as any crown I've ever encountered. You really can't rattle it or wobble it at all. All stem assemblies should be this robust. You'll also appreciate that there's a contrast in the finish with both satin and that high polish. Moving to the bezel, which is ADLC, or amorphous diamond-like carbon, it can't shatter or chip like ceramic, but it's not quite as hard as ceramic. It's a 24-hour lacquer-filled bezel that's of high polish that allows you to read the 24-hour hand, which moves in a single cycle of the dial per day. There is also a Let's move that minute hand out of the way. There is a local hour hand that you can set independently. You can drive the date forward or backwards as you cross the international date line. Pull the crown out all the way. You activate the stop seconds. The details on this dial are exquisite as the components themselves are hand finished using micrometric diamond tipped milling tools to create the mirrored faceting in contrast to the satin faces of these individual applique indices. You'll note how there are several different forms here right down to the unique Nike-like swoosh for the power reserve indicator, which features four bright polished dimples on its surfacing. Exceptional attention to detail. Its edge has been mirror beveled. This is the kind of finish that you often expect to see on the back of the finest Swiss and German watches. There's also a flange outboard that slopes down from the bezel to the dial, and there's a sunken circle disc for the inner dial, so there are multiple focal planes on this dial. Now turn the watch over and you can see the Seiko Spring Drive manufacturer caliber 5R66. 30 joules, watchmaker built, watchmaker regulated. It has a precision of plus or minus 15 seconds per month and a three-day automatic winding power reserve. You can see there's black polish 
on the wheels of the winding system. In fact, that's the ratchet wheel atop the mainspring barrel. It is a hybrid of mechanical and quartz with mechanical sole and quartz precision. There are no batteries, there are no motors, there are no capacitors. All of the energy comes from the mainspring barrel. There is a governing wheel instead of an escapement. It creates an induced electrical current that wakes up a quartz oscillator. The quartz oscillator then creates a back electromagnetic force or back EMF that will either slow or speed up this unidirectional governing wheel depending on whether it needs to speed up or slow down to keep good time. Now the 30 joule movement has a stepless smooth sweep so there is absolutely no step or stagger. It's not a high beat movement. It is a completely smooth sweep. A technology invented by Seiko and Grand Seiko and in many respects this is a Grand Seiko movement in a Seiko watch. All of this water resistant down to 100 meters. This one's loaded on an important piece of modern Seiko luxury heritage on the watch box. And we're back with the Seiko SBN021. Let me remind you that if you rewind this video, you'll see the Japanese sword-inspired components on the dial, movement rotor, as well as case curves of this timepiece, referencing the different Japanese swords, including Tanto, Wakazashi, and Katana. Don't believe me? Be kind, rewind, and find out for yourself.